UJT oscillator. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define UJT, that is, unijunction transistor, and explain the working of UJT as an oscillator. Introduction to UJT oscillator. Lena is a young and smart girl who is passionate about music. One fine morning, Lena starts playing her piano. Suddenly, the piano stops producing sound. Lena gets confused. She hurries to Mr. Bennett, a technician working in the nearby musical store. Hello, Mr. Bennett. Hi, Miss Lena. How can I help you? Mr. Bennett, I had been playing this piano since morning. It suddenly stopped producing any sound. No sound? Let me check it out, Miss Lena. Mr. Bennett starts looking for issues. At first, he takes out the keys from the soundboard of the piano to check for any disconnection in the piano. After seeing this, Lena is running out of questions in her mind. What are the various devices and wires? For what purposes are they used? How do these wires produce sound? And so on. Like her, we too are brimming with questions, isn't it? So, let us see how the connections are given in a piano for producing sound. The acoustic piano is constructed using various keys connected to switches and resistors. These resistors are connected to the oscillator circuit, which is made up of a UJT device. Hence, this oscillator is called a UJT oscillator. This oscillator is in turn connected with the amplifier section and loudspeaker. Assuming, when a key is pressed on the piano, the corresponding switch gets closed and current starts flowing to the oscillator circuit, which generates the sound at a particular frequency. Then this frequency of sound is given to the amplifier section for amplification and the amplified sound is obtained at the loudspeaker. Meanwhile, Mr. Bennett finds all the wires and physical devices connected using a multimeter. When he presses a key, current starts flowing, but the UJT oscillator does not produce any output. Mr. Bennett thus confirms that there is a fault in the UJT oscillator and informs the same to Lena. UJT oscillator? What is that, Mr. Bennett? UJT oscillator, that is, Unijunction transistor oscillator is an electronic device which generates the sound in terms of sawtooth waveforms. Let me explain in detail. Yes, Mr. Bennett. I would like to hear about it. Come on, friends. Let us join Lena and Mr. Bennett to learn more about the UJT oscillator. UJT oscillator. Before getting into the working of a UJT oscillator, we must first know what a UJT is. UJT is a three-terminal electronic device. The terminals are namely emitter E, base B1 and base B2. This UJT is made up of a lightly doped N-type silicon bar with one end acting as base B1 and the other end acting as base B2. And emitter E is made of a heavily doped P-type material placed near the base B2. UJT possesses negative resistance property. That is, when emitter current increases, the emitter voltage decreases and hence, it is used as an oscillator. To use UJT as an oscillator, the resistors R, R1, R2 and capacitor C should be connected to the UJT. So, connect the resistor R between the power supply and the emitter. Then, connect the capacitor C between the emitter and ground. Then, Connect resistor R1 between the base B1 and the ground and resistor R2 between the base B2 and the power supply voltage. The resistor R and capacitor C determine the frequency of an oscillator. The timing interval of the oscillator output is set up by charging and discharging the capacitor. Hence, it is also named as relaxation oscillator or non-linear oscillator. When the power supply is switched on, the current flows through the resistor R and capacitor C starts charging until it reaches the peak point voltage, PP. This voltage level is higher than the emitter base 1 breakdown voltage. Hence, the capacitor C discharges through the resistor R1 and reaches the valley point voltage, VV. 
This process is repeated, resulting in a sawtooth wave form across the capacitor C of UJT oscillator. Thus, the frequency of the oscillations in a UJT oscillator is given by F is equal to 1 divided by RC into natural logarithm of 1 divided by 1 minus eta, where eta denotes intrinsic standoff ratio. Similarly, when any key is pressed in the piano, the current flows to the UJT oscillator through the resistors. Thus, the waveform produced at the output of the UJT oscillator is responsible for sound production. Likewise, the UJT oscillator also finds applications in switching thyristors like SCR and track used for controlling the speed of the motor, dimming lamps and electric heaters. Also, UJT is used as bistable oscillators for digital operations in computers, digital communications, etc. Furthermore, UJT oscillator also possesses some advantages like low cost, negative resistance characteristics, requires low value of triggering current, a stable triggering voltage, and it is a low power absorbing device. Conclusion Lena, hope you now understood why your piano did not produce any sound. It's mainly because of the improper functioning of the UJT oscillator. Yes, Mr. Bennett. It was good to know about the UJT oscillator. Thanks for the wonderful information, Mr. Bennett. Welcome, Miss Alina. I have replaced the malfunctioning UJT in your piano with a new UJT. I'm sure this will help you to get the desired output, Lena. Thanks, Mr. Bennett. Yes, I am sure my piano will play well now. Friends, so along with Lena and Mr. Bennett, we also came to know the reason behind the problem in the piano. Summary This brings us to the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you have learnt that UJT is a three terminal device. The terminals are named as emitter E, base B1, and B2. To act as an oscillator, the resistors and capacitor should connect with the UJT. This resistor R and capacitor C produce the frequency of oscillations across the UJT oscillator. This frequency of oscillations is given by F is equal to 1 divided by RC into natural logarithm of 1 divided by 1 minus eta.